Medical Destiny YouTube channel. In this video, you will go through 25 NCLEX RN Rising Exam multiple choice questions and answers. If you would like to get more videos related to nursing and medical topics, please subscribe my channel. 77. An adult client has undergone a lumbar puncture to obtain cerebrospinal fluid (CSF) for analysis. The nurse assesses for which of the following values that should be negative if the CSF is normal. 1. Protein. 2. Glucose. 3. Red blood cells. 4. White blood cells. Answer 3. Rationale. The adult with normal CSF has no red blood cells in the CSF. The client may have small levels of white blood cells, 0 to 8 cells per cubic millimeter. Protein, 15 to 45 mg per deciliter, and glucose, 45 to 74 mg per deciliter, are normally present in CSF. 78. A client with a burn injury receives a prescription for a regular diet. Which is the best meal for the nurse to provide to the client to promote wound healing? 1. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, apple tea. 2. Chicken breast, broccoli, strawberries, milk. 3. Wheel chop, boiled potatoes, jello, orange. Juice. 4. Pasta with tomato sauce, garlic bread, ginger ale. Answer 2. Rationale, the meal with the best potential to promote wound healing includes nutrient-rich food choices including protein, such as chicken and milk, and vitamin C, such as broccoli and strawberries. The remaining options include one or more items with a low nutritional value, especially the tea, jelly, jello, and ginger ale. 79. A nurse is developing a care plan for a client with urge urinary incontinence. Which of the following interventions would be most helpful for this type of incontinence? Select all that apply. 1. Surgery. 2. Bladder retraining. 3. Scheduled toileting. 4. Dietary modifications. 5. Pelvic muscle exercises. 6. Intermittent catheterization. Answer 2, 3, 4, 5. Rational urge incontinence is the involuntary passage of urine after a strong sense of the urgency to void. It is characterized by urinary urgency, often with frequency, more often than every two hours, bladder spasm or contraction, and voiding in. Either small amounts, less than 100 ml, or large amounts greater than 500 ml. It can be caused by decreased bladder capacity, irritation of the bladder stretch receptors, infection, and alcohol or caffeine ingestion. Interventions to assist the client with urgent incontinence include bladder retraining, scheduled toileting, dietary modifications such as eliminating alcohol and caffeine intake, and pelvic muscle exercises to strengthen the muscles. Surgery and urinary catheterization are invasive measures and will not assist in the treatment of urgent incontinence. 80. A nurse caring for a client with a neurological disorder is planning care to maintain nutritional status. The nurse is concerned about the client's swallowing ability. Which of the following food items should the nurse eliminate from this client's diet? 1. Spinach. 2. Custard. 3. Scrambled eggs. 4. Mashed potatoes. Answer 1. Rationale. In general, flavorful, warm, or well-chilled foods with texture stimulate the swallowing reflex. Soft and semi-soft foods such as custards or puddings, egg dishes, and potatoes are usually effective. Raw vegetables, chunky vegetables such as diced beets, and stringy vegetables such as spinach corn, and peas are foods commonly excluded from the diet of a client with a poor swallowing reflex. 81. An adult client arrives in the emergency department with burns to both legs and perineal area. Using the rule of nines, the nurse would determine that approximately what percentage of the client's body surface has been burned. Blank percent. Answer 37. Rationale, the most rapid method used to calculate the size of a burn injury in adult clients whose weights are in normal proportion to their hay. GHTS is the rule of nines. This method divides the body into areas that are multiples of 9%, except for the perineum. Each leg is 18%, each arm is 9%, and the head is 9%. The trunk is 36%, and the perineal area is 1%. Both legs and perineal area equal 37%. 82. A client is resuming a diet after a bilroth 2 procedure. To minimize complications from eating, the nurse teaches the client to do which of the following. Select all that apply. 1. Lying down after eating. 2. Eating a diet high in protein. 3. Drinking liquids with meals. 
4 eating 6 small meals per day. 5 eating concentrated sweets between meals. Only. Answer 1, 2, 4. Rationale, the client who has had a Bilroth 2 procedure is at risk for dumping syndrome. The client should lie down after eating and avoid drinking liquids with meals to prevent this syndrome. The client should be placed on a dry diet that is high in protein, moderate in fat, and low in carbohydrates. Frequent small meals are encouraged, and the client should avoid concentrated sweets. 83. A nurse is getting a client out of bed for the first time after having abdominal surgery. What clinical manifestations would indicate to the nurse that the client may be experiencing orthostatic hypotension? Select all that apply. 1. Nausea. 2. Dizziness. 3. Bradycardia. 4. Lightheadedness. 5. Flushing of the face. 6. Reports of seeing spots. Answer 1, 2, 4, 6. Rationale, orthostatic hypotension occurs when a normotensive person develops symptoms of low blood pressure when rising to an upright position. Whenever the nurse gets a client up and out of a bed or chair, there is a risk for orthostatic hypotension. Symptoms of dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, tachycardia, pallor, and reports of seeing spots are characteristic of orthostatic hypotension. A drop of approximately 15 mm of mercury in the systolic blood pressure and 10 mm of mercury in the diastolic blood pressure also occurs. Fainting can result without intervention, which includes immediately assisting the client to a lying position. 84. A nurse is closely monitoring a child with increased intracranial pressure who has been exhibiting decorticate, flexor, posturing. The nurse notes that the child suddenly exhibits decerebrate, extensor, posturing and interprets that. This change in the child's condition indicates which of the following? 1. An insignificant finding. 2. An improvement in condition. 3. Decreasing intracranial pressure. 4. Deteriorating neurological function. Answer 4. Rationale, the progression from decorticate to decerebrate posturing usually indicates deteriorating neurological function and warrants physician notification. Options 1, 2, and 3 are inaccurate interpretations. 85. A nurse caring for a hospitalized infant is monitoring for increased intracranial pressure, ICP, and notes that the anterior fontanelle bulges when the infant cries. Based on this assessment finding, which action would the nurse take? 1. Document the findings. 2. Lower the head of the bed. 3. Place the infant on NPO status. 4. Notify the physician immediately. Answer 1. Rationale, the anterior fontanelle is diamond-shaped and located on the top of the head. It should be soft and flat in a normal infant, and it normally closes by 12 to 18 months of age. The posterior fontanelle closes by 2 to 3 months of age. A bulging or tense fontanelle may result from crying or increased ICP. Noting a bulging fontanelle when the infant cries is a normal finding that should be documented and monitored. It is not necessary to notify the physician. Options 2 and 3 are inappropriate actions. 86. A nurse is assessing the vital signs of a 3-year-old child hospitalized with a diagnosis of croup and notes that the respiratory rate is 28 breaths per minute. Based on this finding, which nursing action is appropriate? 1. Administer oxygen. 2. Notify the physician. 3. Document the findings. 4. Reassess the respiratory rate in 15 minutes. Answer 3. Rationale, the normal respiratory rate for a 3-year-old child is approximately 20 to 30 breaths per minute. Because the respiratory rate is normal, options 1, 2, and 4 are unnecessary actions. The nurse would document the findings. 87. A nurse is performing an assessment on a female client who is suspected of having metelschmas. Which does the nurse expect to note on assessment of the client? 1. Experiences pain during intercourse. 2. Has pain at the onset of menstruation. 3. Experiences profuse vaginal bleeding. 4. Has sharp pelvic pain during ovulation. Answer 4. Rationale, Mittelschmas, middle pain, refers to pelvic pain that occurs midway between menstrual periods or at the time of ovulation. The pain is caused by a growth follicle within the ovary, or rupture of the follicle and subsequent spillage of follicular fluid and blood into the perito. Knee space. The pain is fairly sharp and is felt on the right or left side of the pelvis. It generally lasts 1 to 3 days, and slight vaginal bleeding may accompany the discomfort. 88. 
During a health assessment, the client tells the nurse that she was diagnosed with endometriosis and asks the nurse to describe this condition. The nurse tells the client that endometriosis is 1. Extraterrene endometrial tissue 2. Known as primary dysmenorrhea 3. A process that halts menstruation 4. A pain that occurs during ovulation Answer 1. Rationale Endometriosis is defined as the presence of tissue outside the uterus that resembles the endometrium in structure, function, and response to estrogen and progesterone during the menstrual cycle. Primary dysmenorrhea refers to menstrual pain without identified pathology. Amenorrhea, the cessation of menstruation for a period of at least three cycles or six months in a woman who has established a pattern of menstruation, can result from a variety of causes. Mittelschmerz refers to pelvic pain that occurs midway between menstrual periods coinciding with ovulation. 90. A hepatitis B screen is performed on a pregnant client and the results indicate the presence of antigens in the maternal blood. Which of the following should the nurse anticipate to be prescribed? To protect the neonate. 1. Obtain serum liver enzymes. 2. Repeat hepatitis B screen in one week. 3. Administer antibiotics during pregnancy. 4. Administer hepatitis vaccine and hepatitis B. Immune globulin to the neonate. Answer 4. Rationale A. Hepatitis B screen is performed to detect the presence of antigens in maternal blood. If antigens are present, the neonate should receive the hepatitis vaccine and hepatitis B immune globulin while thin 12 hours after birth. Obtaining serum liver enzymes, retesting the maternal blood in a week, and administering antibiotics are inappropriate actions and would not decrease the chance of the neonate contracting the hepatitis B virus. 91. A nurse is counseling the family of a client who has terminal cancer about palliative care. The nurse explains that which of the following are goals of palliative care. Select all that apply. 1. Delays death. 2. Offers a support system. 3. Provides relief from pain. 4. Enhances the quality of life. 5. Focuses only on the client, not the family. 6. Manages symptoms of disease and therapies. Answer 2, 3, 4, 6. Rationale, palliative care is a philosophy of total care. Palliative care goals include the following, providing relief from pain and other distressing symptoms, affirming life and regarding dying as a normal process, neither hastening nor postponing death, integrating psychological and spiritual aspects of client care, offering a support system to help th. E. Client live as actively as possible until death, offering a support system to help families cope during the client's illness and their own bereavement, and enhancing the quality of life. 92. A nurse is performing an assessment on a client seen in the healthcare clinic for a first prenatal visit. The nurse asks the client when the first day of the last menstrual period, LMP, was, and the client reports February 9, 2013. Using Nagel's rule, the nurse determines that the estimated date of birth is 1 October 7, 2013, 2 October 16, 2013, 3 November 7, 2013. 4. November 16, 2013. Answer 4. Rationale. Accurate use of Nagel's rule requires that the woman have a regular 28-day menstrual cycle. To calculate the estimated date of birth, the nurse would subtract 3 months from the first day of the L. MP, add 7 days, and then adjust the year as appropriate. First day of last menstrual period, February 9, 2013, subtract 3 months, November 9, 2012, Add 7 days, November 16, 2012, and add 1 year, November 16, 2013. 93. The nurse prepares to access an implanted vascular access port. Which should the nurse implement? First, 1. Palpate the vascular port. 2. Anchor the vascular port. 3. Cleanse the site with alcohol. 4. Apply a cool compress to the site. Answer 1. Rationale, before accessing an implanted vascular access port, the nurse must palpate the port to locate the center of the septum because the nurse needs to know where to insert the needle to avoid more than one needle stick for the client. The nurse then applies the cool compress to the insertion site to ease any discomfort that occurs from the needle stick, cleanses the site with alcohol, anchors the port with the non-dominant hand avoiding contamination of the septum, and accesses the site. 94. A nurse is preparing to measure the fundal height of a client whose fetus is 28 weeks gestation. To perform the procedure, the nurse should place the client 
वन इन ए स्टैंडिंग पोजिशन टू इन दी ट्रेंडल एंड वर्क पोजिशन थ्री सुपाइन विद दी हेड ऑफ दी बेड एलिवेटेड टू फोर्टी फाइव डिग्रीज फोर सुपाइन विद हर हेड ऑन ए पिलो एंड नीज स्लाइटली फ्लेक्सड आंसर फोर राशनाल विन मेशरिंग फंडल हाइट दी क्लाइंट लाइज इन ए सुपाइन बैक पोजिशन विद हर हेड ऑन ए पिलो एंड नीज स्लाइटली फ्लेक्सड The standing position, Trendelenburg, head lowered, or supine with the head elevated to 45 degrees would not give an accurate measurement. 96. A nurse in the prenatal clinic is monitoring a client who is pregnant with twins. The nurse monitors the client closely for which priority complication that is associated with a twin pregnancy. One hemorrhoids. Two postum labor. Three maternal anemia. Four gestational diabetes. Answer three. Rational maternal anemia often occurs in twin pregnancies because of a greater demand for iron by the fetuses. Hemorrhoids occur in a twin pregnancy but would not be as high a priority as anemia. Option two is incorrect because twin pregnancies often end in prematurity. Option four is not a complication of a twin pregnancy. Ninety-seven. A clinic nurse is assessing a prenatal client with heart disease. The nurse carefully assesses the. Client's vital signs, weight, and fluid and nutritional status to detect for complications caused by 1. Rh incompatibility, 2. Fetal cardiomegaly, 3. The increase in circulating blood volume, 4. Hypertrophy and increased contractility of the heart. Answer 3. Rational pregnancy taxes the circulating system of every woman because both the blood volume and cardiac output increase. Options one, two, and four are not directly associated with pregnancy in a client with a cardiac condition. One hundred. A nurse is caring for a client who is receiving cyclosporine, Gengraf. Which of the following indicates to the nurse that the client is experiencing an adverse reaction to the medication? One acne, two sweating, three joint pain, four hyperkalemia. Answer four. Rational cyclosporine is an immunosuppressant medication used in the prophylaxis of organ rejection. Adverse effects include nephrotoxicity, infection, hypertension, tremor, and hirsutism. Additionally, neurotoxicity, gastrointestinal effects, hyperkalemia, and hyperglycemia can occur. Options one, two, and three are not associated with this medication. One hundred and one. A childbirth educator tells a class of expectant. Parents that it is standard routine to instill a medication into the eyes of a newborn infant as a preventive measure against ophthalmia neonatorum. The educator tells the class that the medication currently used for the prophylaxis of ophthalmia neonatorum is one vitamin K injection, two penicillin ophthalmic eye ointment, three neomycin ophthalmic eye ointment, four erythromycin ophthalmic eye ointment. Answer four. Rational ophthalmic erythromycin 0.5% ointment is a broad-spectrum antibiotic and is used prophylactically to prevent ophthalmia neonatorum (NII) infection acquired from the newborn infant's passage through the birth canal. Infection from these organisms can cause blindness or serious eye damage. Erythromycin is effective against Neisseria gonorrhoeae and Chlamydia trachomatis. Vitamin K is administered to the newborn infant to prevent abnormal bleeding, and it promotes liver formation of the clotting factors 2, 7, IX, and X. Options 2 and 3 are incorrect and are not medications routinely used in the newborn. 102. A nurse is reviewing the records of recently admitted clients to the postpartum unit. The nurse determines that which new client would be at least risk for developing a puerperal infection. One a client with a history of previous infections. Two a client who had an excessive number of vaginal exams. Three a client who underwent a vaginal delivery of the newborn. Four a client who experienced prolonged rupture of the membranes. Answer three. Rational risk factors associated with puerperal infection include a history of previous infections, cesarean, and births, trauma, prolonged rupture of the membranes, prolonged labor, excessive number of vaginal examinations, and retained placental fragments. 104. After assessment and diagnostic evaluation, it has been determined that the client has Lyme disease stage 2. The nurse assesses the client for which of the following that is most indicative of this stage. 1 lethargy, 2 headache, 3 erythematous rash, 4 neurological deficits. Answer 4. 
Rational, stage 2 of Lyme disease develops within 1 to 6 months in most untreated individuals. The most serious problems in this stage include cardiac conduction defects and neurological disorders such as Bell's palsy and paralysis. These problems are not usually permanent. Flu-like symptoms, headache and lethargy, and a rash appear in stage 1. 105. A nurse is caring for a client with a diagnosis of pemphigus. On assessment of the client, the nurse looks for which hallmark sign characteristic of this condition. 1. Turner's sign. 2. Chabostik's sign. 3. Nikolsky's sign. 4. Trousseau's sign. Answer 3. Rational, a hallmark sign of pemphigus is Nikolsky's sign, which occurs when the epidermis can be rubbed off by slight friction or injury. Other characteristics include flaccid bullae that rupture easily and emit a full smelling. Drainage, leaving crusted, denuded skin. The lesions are common. On the face, back, chest, and umbilicus. Even slight pressure on an intact blister may cause spread to adjacent skin. Turner's sign refers to a grayish discoloration of the flanks and is seen in clients with acute pancreatitis. Chabostik's sign, seen in tetany, is a spasm of the facial muscles elicited by tapping the facial nerve in the region of the parotid gland. Trousseau's sign is a sign for tetany, in which carpal spasm can be elicited by compressing the upper arm with a blood pressure cuff inflated above the systolic pressure and causing ischemia to the nerves distally.